Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we have some more news about iOS 17, some big news about watchOS 10, new Apple products, and more to talk about. This is your news update for the week of April 3rd, 2023. Now, Apple's weather widget and weather app in general continue to have issues after installing iOS 16.4 and iOS 16.5 betas. Sometimes it doesn't seem to gather any data, the widget will be completely blank, and in order to fix this, you would have to go into the app, wait for it to update, and then it works properly. I've heard this from a lot of people, and it doesn't seem to matter which version you're on, so it's curious as whether or not this is actually an issue with iOS itself or something that can be fixed remotely with the data being sent to the widget or to the app in general. So we'll have to wait and see, but if it's something that's specific to iOS 16.4 and 16.5, we could see that fixed with 16.5 or maybe in between we'd see an iOS 16.4.1 if they can't fix it on the server side. So let me know if you're having that issue. Now a jeweler updated the Apple watch ultra recently, and you can buy a couple different variants of these, but you can see those here. Diamond polished Apple watch ultra with black Breitling rubber band. We also have another one custom anodized blue Apple watch, and these look pretty great. I'll link them in the description. Of course you can take a look at them and they're quite expensive, but I just thought I'd bring it up as we haven't seen some good customizations in quite some time where we used to have a lot of different customizations for different products from Apple, such as AirPods and more done by third parties. So this is just another company I hadn't heard of that I wanted to share with you. Now, GM is apparently getting rid of Apple CarPlay and its EVs starting in 2024 as it's working with Google instead. I think this is a horrible idea as I'm someone that's actually driven Teslas and Rivian that doesn't have Apple's CarPlay. And those systems are good enough that you don't really need it, but it still would be nice to have it. GM getting rid of it is a reason for people to go elsewhere. Now, Volvo also already integrates Google products into its EVs, but they still allow you to use CarPlay typically, so it's not much of an issue. I think GM getting rid of this is a bad idea, but what do you think? Now there's another iPhone, original iPhone up for auction, but this time it has a sticker on it that says lucky you. It's very rare. And currently at the time of this video, the bid is at $40,320. I'll link this in the description if you want to see it, but we're seeing more and more of these as they're going between about 50 and $60,000 sealed for the first generation iPhone. I think that's a bit absurd. Either way, you can buy an open one for much less. And as soon as you take that wrapper off, it devalues by about a thousand and ten percent or more so you can get these for a couple hundred dollars just in a completely working order or much less than this so let me know what you think of the overall sealed iphones going up for auction i should have kept a few if i had the money to buy them back in the day should have bought a few of those for sure this past week apple updated numbers pages and keynote they added apple pencil hover support after apple updated the ipad pro the latest generation with the M2 processor to support tilt and azimuth. So if we go into pages and then we use the second generation Apple pencil, we bring in the pencil and if we hover over the top, that's one of the latest features as we tilt up, it actually turns from a line to a point. So if you can see that here, goes from a line to a point and it's really nice that they've added that feature. I'm not sure why my screen keeps dimming like that, but as you can see, they've added support for that. So it's great that they've done that, but they are removing support for a feature that's in those same three apps. And that actually has to do with presentation sharing. That's going away in favor of using Zoom or WebEx to share your screen. Apple actually detailed this in a support document and it seems it's not worth their time to keep implementing this into the app. So there's a support document for it. I'll link it in the description, but they're getting rid of that support since most people probably use it through Zoom or something else anyway. Now, Apple is now selling the Apple Watch Series 8 and SE refurbished. So those are available refurbished, but you typically can get them for less money on, say, Amazon sold directly through Apple. This week, we have some new deals to talk about with the lowest price for the Apple Watch Ultra ever. Currently, it's $779 on Amazon, and once you add it to your cart, they take off an additional $50. So that's a pretty good deal. 
AirPods Pro 2 are still on sale at $229, and iPad Air is $100 off at $499. So some good deals there. I'll link those in the description like I normally do. Now this past week, we had a bunch of releases, iOS 16.4, iOS 16.5 beta one. Of course, the next beta will be out in probably a couple weeks. Typically every two weeks is what Apple does with early betas, beta one, beta two, sometimes even up to beta three. Then we go to a weekly schedule and based on that, a final release would be expected around May. That seems to make the most sense what they've done in the past. And this past week, also Mark German said that Mac OS 13.4, where we have beta of that will support some new Macs that will be unveiled before WWDC in May. So we could see those final new Macs that we're waiting for, maybe a Mac Pro, maybe iMac Pro, or just an updated iMac in general, and a MacBook as well. So we'll have to see what Apple has planned for that. But if they unveil different hardware before WWDC, well, then I would expect maybe some big announcements at WWDC. Now, of course, I did mention how we did have WWDC invites go out. That's at developer.apple.com. And if you want to go there, sign up to try and join, be there in person, and then watch the keynote with others. You can do that on June 5th to the 9th. That's where we'll see all of the major updates with iOS 17 and more. And with iOS 17, it's going to be better than expected, according to Mark Gurman. It's been thought for a while that iOS 17 would just be a small feature update and offer just mostly focusing on stability. And that's something we've wanted for a long time. Instead, it seems we'll finally get some of the most requested features, according to Mark Gurman, that are nice to have updates, meaning maybe split view, we could get some battery enhancements, and along with that stability, what other features they would have, whether that's a redesigned control center, or just something that makes it a little bit nicer to use, or possibly update to different widgets and apps. Either way, we don't expect huge updates, but we do expect some nicety updates, hopefully some redesign with the icons. But I think at this point, I'm not expecting any major redesign this year. However, with watch OS 10, it's expected to get some major updates unlike iOS 17, according to Mark Gurman. He says to expect notable changes to the user interface as Apple watches this year are set to get minor updates. So Apple continues to sort of change the overall interface, make it maybe a little bit more user friendly and maybe a little bit different. So we could see watch faces and a complete redesign of the interface. We haven't had one of those really since the first Apple watch. Now that Apple's sort of gotten into its stride of what watch OS is, I would expect something big this year. So we could see that on June 5th, iPhone 15 is getting closer and closer to production as Apple has to finalize that so they can produce millions by September. The iPhone 15 pro and pro max will feature haptic buttons that stay active even when powered off. That's the latest information where they'll replace the volume buttons and silent switch with haptic buttons that stay active all of the time. Then you'd be able to customize the silent switch instead. And that would be similar to what we have with the action button on the Apple watch ultra. So that makes a lot of sense. Most most people either keep this in silent or don't use it a whole lot. And I'm sure Apple has some diagnostics about that and how much it's used. So we could see a programmable button here that we could just put it in silent or make it maybe even open the camera or something else. I ran this by a few people and they actually thought that was a great idea. I thought more would sort of be upset with it, but if you could program it, I think that makes all the difference. Now those buttons will apparently work with gloves and be customizable as far as their haptic response intensity. That's what we have on the iPhone seven and eight. When you press the home button, you can actually change the overall intensity of that. That would help to compensate if you have a case on the phone so that you can make sure you feel the response from it. Also, we're said to get a periscope zoom lens in the update. So we could have those upgradable buttons or customizable buttons with a periscope zoom lens. And that's really all we're hearing other than the slight redesign of the phone. Now, non pro iPhones will finally get promotion in two years. Unfortunately, this is according to Ross young as Apple's not planning to roll that out to the regular iPhones anytime soon. So we may have to wait for iPhone 17 until everyone has promotion. I know some people don't care about that, but I would love to see it on everything as it's on many budget phones today as well. With iOS 16.5, we found that Apple has new AirPods in the works, or at least a case patently. Apple recently found a new patent for AirPods case with an interactive touchscreen on it. So this maybe would help us control tracks or volume, or maybe have a completely different function. Either way, it looks like Apple's working on some different ideas, whether or not we ever see it though, is hard to say.
Now, Apple is still working and expected to show off the AR VR headset at WWDC this year. Mark Gurman is said to still expect it despite a lot of the latest uncertainty, but according to Ming-Chi Kuo, Apple has actually pushed back production of it to later in the year. They could show it off at WWDC and then launch it later in the year. That's what I would expect if they're going to show it. And that said, Tim Cook recently talked about AR in a recent interview where he talked about AR glasses and more, but he said, we always thought that glasses were not a smart move from a point of view that people would really not want to wear them. They were intrusive instead of pushing technology to the background. As we've always believed, we always thought it would flop. And as you know, so far it has. So it looks like he's not sold on AR glasses. So we'll have to see what they're going to offer with VR or AR altogether. Now, one thing we heard about a little while ago has to do with the Apple Watch and its sensors being able to track glucose. According to Mark Gurman, this is still a ways off, unfortunately, despite them reaching some milestones in the overall sensors. So we may not see these for three to seven years, according to Mark Gurman. Some of that could just be certification to make sure it works properly, or maybe the technology just still isn't ready. But that's something I think that would be life changing for so many. And if they can get it right, it would be great. I'd rather see it sooner rather than later, though. Now, Apple is still said to be working on MacBooks with OLED displays. While they're expected to bring it to iPads, MacBooks are expected to get them as well. According to the ELEC, Apple is working with LG to bring OLED panels to MacBooks and iPad Pro. So maybe they're giving up on micro LED instead favoring OLED since it can be super thin and it's already available. Maybe it's a little less expensive than developing that technology even further. Of course, we're still waiting for the Mac Pro and maybe a 15 inch MacBook Air as well very, very soon. And that's everything for this past week. Lots to talk about, lots to look forward to iPhone 15, iOS 17, and much more. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.